Good evening, guys. It's one of those rare Saturday Facebook Lives. So this will get us caught up with the last training in Knowing Your No. And this is all about handling disappointment and how we deal with guilt. And then uh, tomorrow I'll email out some no scripts. Okay? So just things, easy ways to say no. So create a little image for you that you can then download. So let me make sure I get to the page, get to the community, so I can say hi to you guys. Hi, 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 David. I see you. Um, okay, so let's jump into it. So over the last week, our holiday week here, we've been discussing to how we know our notes. So the first step in that was occupying our space, giving ourselves the two rights, the right to occupy our space, the right not to care, the practice of embodying where we're at, and practicing our own personal authority and autonomy. And our training number two was all about tuning into our want impulse, the yes, no impulse towards things that we desire, or we don't desire things we're repulsed by or attracted to. If you've been doing those experiments, you're likely starting to hear and see your own sense of yes and no in your body. Now you know where your boundaries are. You know what to say yes to, you know what to say no to, because you can you can tell what you want, what you don't, okay? Fundamental basic boundary right there. And then now, here we are in how to, dis, how to deal with disappointment, especially disappointing other people, and then how we can let go of being guilty. We can let go of guilt forever because it's not a useful emotion. All right, so let's jump into it. So often with, with um, codependency, dealing with the discard trauma, disappointment is a signal of our value. Our value is now threatened. We're scared that they're not going to love us anymore, they're not going to keep us anymore, and we're going to be trapped in this um, emptiness, this internalized loneliness, this dread of not being kept. And so we avoid disappointment like we would avoid the plague. It's just not it's a detrimental risk to our sense of value and our safety. Now, so we exit codependency and we move towards genuine love for ourselves and real connection with ourselves and others and healing our sense of value so that we become embodied in it rather than trying to prove it or find it, get it from other people. Disappointment becomes a filter, it becomes a transaction or experience in being ourselves and understanding where our boundaries are, okay? Because a lot of times, disappointment is it's coming from unhealthy people, so the disappointment is about us changing to conform to their expectations. So I know it's probably come across a little combobulated, but there's two types of disappointment, okay? And it really depends on the source. There's healthy disappointment, and there's unhealthy disappointment. Pretty simple. Healthy disappointment comes from people who care about our well-being, their expression of disappointment would be, I'm concerned about this choice you make because it's interfering. It looks like it's going to interfere with your happiness. It's going to interfere with your well-being. And then they're going to want to understand your reasons for making the choice you're making. That's the key. They're, they're interested in where you're coming from. They want to understand what you feel, what led to this choice, what's, what's going on for you in this. They're not going to jump from an assumption that they know what you're doing or what you need. They want to understand why you chose what you chose so they can see what need or want you're trying to fulfill because they're genuinely interested in your long-term happiness. That's a healthy concern or disappointment they can bring up. That doesn't mean you have to change your choice, guys. A healthy disappointment is just a signal that someone cares about your well-being but you still do not have to regulate their feelings or make them feel good about your choice because their feelings are in their yard. So stay in your yard with your feelings, let them manage theirs, okay? Now, with unhealthy disappointment, this is where someone is upset with you because you're taking away something from them that they feel entitled to, okay? This, if we look at the consumer supply relationship with the discard trauma, this is when we stop giving the narcissistic, abusive, toxic person 
their supply and they get really mad at us and call us selfish. And this can show up in the weirdest and simplest of forms like, hey, I'm gonna go out with my friends tonight. What? You're going out with your friends, but what about me? You know, it's like, maybe they wake you up at night asking where their coffee cup is and you're like, I don't know, that's your coffee cup. And they get upset at you with it because you're not giving them their supply. This is unhealthy disappointment. How they express their disappointment and what they're disappointed in can tell you a lot about how healthy this person is and where they belong in your life and your relationships, okay? But here's the beautiful part about all disappointment. None of it is for you to manage because if someone's disappointed in, in your choice, their yard, their disappointment's in their yard. That's their right. They can be as disappointed as they want. You don't have to change your yard. You don't have to do anything different because your priority is your happiness. Bar none, zip, zilks. That's the way it operates. Nothing else to say. That's the limit. That's the hard, the hard boundary right there, hard wall there. Okay? So you can stop worrying about their disappointment, about being about your value or making a mistake because you can sit there and go, hey, this is why I'm doing it. If you're talking with a healthy person, or hey, if you're dealing with an unhealthy person, you say, hey, this is what it is. You're going to have to live with it and move on, go on with your life, okay? Now we need to restructure a bit about how we think about disappointment. And I like to do that with easy questions. Um, um, and I, you know, these come from the Sedona method, so they're going to just be permission-based questions. And that is, if I could, would I give myself permission to disappoint other people and not fix it? If I could do that, when would I do that? That right there, right, we suddenly are liberated from having to even worry about it. Just like, oh, I don't have to take care anymore. Then you can give them permission. If I could, would I give them permission to be disappointed and I not fix it? Right? If I could, would I give myself permission to disappoint others and enjoy it? <laughs> right? If I could, would I give people permission to be disappointed if I could would I give myself permission to be disappointed then we can I like that question because a lot of times with these consumer supply transactional relationships they're allowed to be as angry disappointed frustrated as they want to be but we're not allowed to be and so it creates this inequality and that breeds resentment so if we give ourselves permission to be disappointed in people, suddenly it becomes okay that people are also disappointed because now the level, the, the playing field is level. Everything is equal that way. I find that to be a very empowering position because suddenly <laughs> it's like, you can be as disappointed as you want because I get to be disappointed too. So I get it. It sucks when people make choices you don't agree with. Oh, well, you know. These are easy ways to help restructure our mindset and our perception around disappointing other people. Now, there's an important thing about disappointment that comes from unhealthy people. The way they say it, they're like, I'm disappointed in who you are. I'm disappointed in you. They're attacking your value when they do that. That's an abusive approach. I don't care. But it's a hard limit with me. Someone's going to say, I'm disappointed in you. You don't get to judge my value. You can be disappointed in my action and my choices, but you don't get to determine my value. So be like, eh, I'm done talking about this because you're obviously going after something that's sacred because nobody has the right to determine our value, including ourselves. Our job is to honor it, witness it, and embody our value, but never to judge it. Okay? Mm -hmm. So these are some pretty simple ways at navigating outside the world of disappointment, of, of being controlled by it rather and then getting some freedom with it. It's like, yeah, be disappointed. So we don't have to internalize it anymore. We don't have to change. Our choices are for our needs, our wants, our happiness, not for theirs. And that's just like their choices are for their wants, needs, and happiness, and not for ours. Very important boundary there because it allows us to keep ownership of what's ours. They keep ownership of what's theirs. And then we a lot of times the disappointment just stops happening because we realize that our disappointment about someone else's choices really signals to us a fear. You know, like, I'm, I'm scared I won't have this with you anymore. And then we can communicate about that and make some changes if they 
want to make those changes about this agreement or about what we would like to have with them. So it can signal us to wants and needs we have with that individual and we can go about getting them met in a different way. So it can be a very powerful tool that way. All right, so now let's talk a bit about guilt. Guilt is typically about a rule, a rule that we've internalized and assumed is what it's, you know, we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be a particular way. We're supposed to follow this particular rule. So we feel guilty when we break the rule. What if we start analyzing anything we feel guilty about? We'll do a little analysis here and ask yourself a question. You know, is this a rule I agree with now? Is this a rule that I chose or was this a rule that was put on me? Would I like to change that rule? What rule would be light and expansive for me in this? That gives us a chance to get back into control of what we agree with in our agreements. That way, we don't have to feel guilt anymore. Instead, we get to feel agreement. We get to feel confident. We get to feel clear. We get to deal with it up front. So everything has a, a nice, direct, clear, and simple agreement between you and the other people you're dealing with. That way, there isn't any room for guilt. Secondly, guilt is often more about us than it is about the person we've affected. And so a lot of times when I feel guilt, I turn towards a point of view of remorse. It's like, how do I feel about how my choice or my behavior impacted them? Maybe it really did affect their lives in a negative way. Well, then I can have some remorse and empathy about that. And that restores and repairs the relationship most of the time, unless I did something really severe, which most of us really don't do all that often, right? Now I can, I'm not feeling guilt. I'm feeling care. I'm feeling concern. So that's a better vibration. Another thing we can do is realize or, or we can explore the idea that most of our guilt is based on arbitrary rules we never really accepted as our own. We can start giving that up. We can start letting go of the guilt. We can give ourselves permission to be ourselves and disappoint others and feel joy about it, to feel indifferent about it, to feel empathy about it, but not guilt. See, we have the right to determine how we feel about the choices we make. We don't have to run on these programs anymore that say you should feel guilt or you should feel shame or you should feel awful. It's more like, what would I like to feel when these kind of things happen? What would I like to feel when there is a disagreement? What would I like to feel when, the, when someone feels uh, hurt by a choice or an action I took? Rather than guilt, is there a better, more effective feeling I could incorporate to get a result I would want? that kind of thing. Because a lot of times we don't have to feel guilt at all. We don't have to feel guilt for buying something we wanted. We don't have to feel guilt for saying no or saying yes. We don't have to feel guilt for asking for something. These are natural autonomous actions. They don't deserve guilt because we're not being a burden. We're not imposing ourselves on anybody. We're acting in our own authority in our yard to do the things that matter to us for our happiness. I have a right to do that. So when you find yourself feeling guilty, make sure you check in and go, am I feeling guilty about something that I have a right to do anyway? Because if you do have a right to do the thing, like make a choice, do an action, feel a certain way, have a desire, and you feel guilty about that, then you're agreeing to somebody else's rule. You can give that up and make your own rule about it. So we don't have to feel guilty. We can feel remorse, we can feel empathy, we can feel indifferent. Most of all, we can feel confident. We can trust ourselves, go out and do things that bring happiness and joy to our life. Okay, guys? This is how we can embrace our no, make saying no safe and effective by embracing our disappointment, rewriting the rules around guilt, releasing it, and giving, giving ourselves permission to be the genuine authority we actually already are in our lives. That way, our no works for our happiness and their happiness. It's a very important signal here. When I say no to someone, I am saying yes to my happiness and to theirs. Very important because the relationship is honest, it's direct, clear, and simple. So they now can make a decision about what they need to do and I can make a decision about what I need to do. Easy. So no works towards our happiness. Works for honest connection and genuine experience of love and and. Uh, reciprocation okay guys so explore your no 
and enjoy it. Let me know if you have any questions or comments on this. Just comment below. If you're on YouTube, just post a comment below. Also, guys, subscribe if you're on the YouTube. If you're on Facebook, share this with people you know that would benefit from it. I appreciate you guys. You guys have a great weekend, and I will see you guys next week.